And it's Mike from Wooly Bug. And Darren from Piscator Flies. Hey guys, this is Mike from Wooly Bug. Today, Darren will be showing you how to tie the San Juan worm. San Juan patterns can be tied in many different colors and they're effective for both wild and stock trout. The fly imitates an aquatic worm and trout can go crazy for them under the right circumstances. I like to drop a bright pink San Juan worm off of a bead-headed nymph when fishing water that is high and stained from recent rain. At the end of this video, you can tap or click a link to watch me successfully fish this pattern on Morgan Run Creek in Maryland. Here are the materials you'll need to tie this pattern, and Darren will show you how. Thanks, Mike. Let's get a fresh hook in the vise. So today we're going to be using a Mustad C67S. This is uh, uh, a shorter egg hook. I find it really great for worm patterns and as well as eggs. And I've tipped it in the vise jaws. We're going to adjust that a little bit later. So this is just so I can get my thread wraps deep into that bend and attach my worm material there. We're going to be using a 70 denier 6 aught Danville. And this is a red thread. We're going to be tying this in red today. And we'll just start by putting on a layer of thread onto the hook shank. We'll go deep into the bend. We'll trim our thread there. And then we'll take those wraps back up a little ways, all the way back to the eye. I tie this in a number of different colors, lots of pinks, reds, oranges. Uh, I do also do some brown, tan, green. Um, anything you think the fish will enjoy. So we'll just put a couple half hitches here and then we're gonna trim our thread off. So we got that nice base layer of thread to work on. Push our bead back up to the eye and then wrap on behind. So we're using an ultra chenille. This is a really densely packed chenille and it uh, gives a little bit of movement in the water. When this gets wet it'll be a little bit more uh, malleable. And uh, so I like to tie this somewhere around two to two and a half times the length of the hook for the tail and for the front. So we'll just add a few wraps of thread. We want to try and go over the same spot each time just so we're not binding down too much of that chenille. We'll pull the chenille back, wrap forward a couple times near the middle of the hook shank and then we'll add a few more wraps. And then we're going to pull that chenille back and we're going to wrap up just behind the bead. And we're gonna add a couple more half hitches here. And I add the half hitches here behind the bead because we're gonna actually wrap over that again and it's not gonna be a weak spot for a fly. So I'm just gonna reposition the hook in the vise so we can get at the front a little easier. Push that bead back and we'll start our thread again right behind the eye. And we'll take that back to butt up against the bead. And I'll trim that tag end. Now we're just going to pull the chenille over top and brace the bead against the back tie-in spot. And we'll add a few more wraps here just to kind of lock that bead in place. You can actually just uh, wrap your thread around the bead, but I find that creates a weak point in the fly, so I opt to add a half hitch and restart the thread on the other side of the bead. Now we're up at the eye and we'll just add a few wraps to secure that. And again, we'll kind of measure that out about two and a half lengths of the hook and then we'll trim the front part of the fly off. So now we're gonna add a 
whip finish just to secure the head of the fly here. And as always, I like to, if, if the, I think the fly calls for it, I'm going to add two sets of whip finish. And just to be on the safe side, you know, trim off our thread. Right, so one thing I like to do with a fly that has exposed thread wraps is to add uh, some sort of cement just to kind of give a little bit of protection against any nicks or teeth that might hit it. So we're going to be using a little bit of bone dry. This is a brushable UV resin. And we'll just add a few brushes there and then we'll hit that with the UV light so that it cures and hardens. And that's really going to make this fly quite durable. And so once that's cured, we just have one step left to do. And we just need to taper the front and the back. And to do that, we're just going to use a little flame. So I've got a lighter here. And we're just going to quickly, quickly pass that through the flame just to singe it and taper that front part a little bit and then we'll do the same to the back it takes a little bit of practice to get it down without lighting the chenille on fire but it's just really quick you don't need a lot and then I usually just take my thumb and forefinger and try and taper it a little bit extra there you go that's the San Juan worm Hey Tires, thanks for checking out our video. Please take a minute and check out Mike's excellent on the water vlogs over at the Wooly Bugs YouTube channel. I've got some links in the description that you can follow. If you enjoyed the video and want to show a bit of support for what we're doing here, why not give it a thumbs up? Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updated on the latest fly patterns, books and reviews. If you have any questions or comment, leave a message below. We make sure to answer each and every one. Until next time, this is Darren saying keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.